What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be going through the entire DJI Fly application for the Mavic Air 2. Whether you're somebody that's coming from an older DJI drone and you are using the older Go application, or if you're somebody that just picked up the Mavic Air 2 as your very first drone, this video is going to be a great starting point as I'll be going over what some of the different icons and settings mean here in the Fly application, and I'll give you a head start by going over what I believe are the best settings. So if you want to, go ahead and grab your Mavic Air 2, boot it up, get your controller out, and open up the Fly application and walk through with me. So the first screen that we're taking a look at here is the live transmission feed that's coming back to us from the Mavic Air 2's camera. And while there isn't a whole lot of changeable settings here on the screen, there is a lot of very important information that we need to know when we're flying our drone. So we'll cover everything here by starting in the top left corner and then working our way to the right and then working our way down on the screen. So starting in that top left corner with the back button, it brings us to the home screen of the fly application. But to get back to that live view, we'll tap on go fly. Now, next up, we've got the flight mode of our drone. Right now we're in N mode, but we could switch to S mode, which is sport mode, or T mode, which is tripod mode. We'll go back to N mode or normal mode here. And by the way, I was changing those modes by using the slider here in the center of the remote controller. Now, next up, we've got the status of our aircraft. Right now it says takeoff is permitted. If we tap on that, it shows us the status of the drone. It says that everything is normal, but if something had an error or if there was some sort of warning, it would appear right there under pre-flight check. Next up, we've got the auto RTH altitude. We can change that using the slider, as well as the max altitude and the max distance that we can fly. Finally, we can take a look at the storage locations, the SD card, as well as the internal storage. Now, moving into the top right corner of the screen here, all of these icons directly associate with some sort of component located in or on the Mavic Air 2. So first up here, we've got the obstacle avoidance icon that shows us whether or not the sensors are turned on or off. So right now, it's fully highlighted in white. That means it is turned on and the drone is actively looking for obstacles around it using those sensors, but if we flip into sport mode where the sensors turn off to achieve a higher speed, those sensors now highlight in red because they're turned off and they're not actively looking for obstacles. So that's a really good way to quickly glance to make sure the sensors are turned on or to see if they're turned off. We'll flip back into normal mode here. Now, next up, we've got the satellite icon followed by five bars that shows us the GPS signal strength that our drone has, and it shows us the amount of satellites connected to our drone that are analyzed its position. Now next up, we've got the Wi-Fi icon that shows us the signal strength between our remote controller and the Mavic Air 2 itself. Next up, we've got the battery life percentage uh, that shows us the amount of capacity left in the drone's battery. And right next to that, it shows us the amount of flight time that we have remaining, the estimated flight time remaining. But of course, right now the drone has landed, so you guys wouldn't be able to see the time. Uh, we can also tap on this area in the top right corner to get some more information about the battery. So we can see the temperature, we can see our total flight time, and the voltage of each different cell within the battery. Now moving a little bit further down the screen and over to the left, we've got a lone icon there on on that left side that allows us to take the drone off. Of course, we're not going to take off now, but this is auto takeoff, so we can tap on that hold takeoff and the drone will lift up automatically for us. Moving all the way over to the right side of the screen, that big red button is the record and the shutter button. So whether we're shooting photos or videos, we can use that button rather than the button on the remote controller itself to shoot some photos and some videos. Just above that with the film, film reel icon, this allows us to choose our shooting mode. So we can choose between shooting photos, videos, quick shots, hyperlapses, and panoramas. Uh, also from here, we can further tweak our shooting style. So we can choose like our frame rate, we can choose the resolution. When we're shooting some photos here, we can choose uh, whether we want to shoot single photos, 48 megapixel photos, smart photos, bracketed photos. So within here, we can change exactly how our camera is going to operate. And then further underneath of that, marked by the play button, we can see the different photos that are located on the storage devices on our drone. So the internal storage and the SD card, we can view the different photos, videos taken, and we can also create some different edits down in the bottom right corner. Now, moving back over to the live transmission feed here, all the way to the bottom left corner, we can bring the map up by tapping on that small square icon. We can also bring that full screen by tapping on the map itself. We can zoom out, look around, and use the map for, say, air sense if we wanted to, but we'll go back to the live view feed and we'll shrink that map down because sometimes I feel like it gets in the way when I'm trying to fly. Next to that, we've got our telemetry. We've got the height and the distance as well as the vertical and the horizontal speed. Now, just right there in the middle, you'll see we've got the drone's orientation to where we are at our current location. So as I move my remote controller around, that small little 
triangle moves around and that's dependent upon where the drone is located so this gives us an idea of whether or not it's straight ahead over to the right or over to the left it's a very important tool to use if you lose where your drone is at that will help you get your drone back now finally moving to the bottom right corner this is where the exposure settings are located for our drone so we can choose auto or manual settings by tapping on the camera icon and then we can further change our ISO and the shutter speed settings from there. Or if we choose to do auto settings, we can choose our exposure value and let the camera pretty much do all the hard work for us. All right, so that pretty much wraps up everything you guys need to know about the different pieces of text and the different icons here on the live transmission view. Again, these are very important to note. They kind of just make your whole experience a lot better with your drone when you can go look, glance down and see exactly what it's trying to tell you. And it can avoid a lot of catastrophes in the future. So so make sure you brush up on what these icons mean because it'll just make the whole experience a lot better. Now what we're going to do is move into some of the different menus and settings built into the fly application to further change how this drone flies. So in the top right corner with the three dots, we'll tap on that and that brings us into the menus. We've got five menus here, safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. That about section kind of just contains information about the drone. So we've only got four menus that we'll be covering here in today's video. The first of which is safety. So first up here, we can change the max altitude and the max distance that our drone can fly. I have got these cranked all the way up to no limit and 1,640. Of course, I don't fly at 1,640 feet. I abide by the laws. I abide by the FAA guidelines. I stick under 400 feet, but I'd rather control that on my own and not have the drone control that for me. Sometimes I'm flying in an area with higher mountains. Sometimes I'm flying in an area with higher structures and I want to be able to get the full 400 feet above what I'm flying. So I take that into consideration and just make sure that I stay under 400 feet on my own within the application by monitoring the telemetry in the bottom left corner. Now moving on the auto RTH altitude. When you set this, this is the return to home altitude or the altitude that the drone will go up to when it comes back to you. So right now it's at 393. That means the drone, if it loses connection or I engage RTH will go up to 393 feet, spin around and fly back to me. Now this is subjective. I would highly recommend that you guys just make sure you scan the area, see what the highest structure is, and then say, choose hundred feet above that. So if your drone does lose connection, it goes above that highest obstacle and comes back to you. For me, I'm sometimes in urban environments with higher buildings. So I keep mine at a flat 400 feet, basically at all times. But again, take care when you're doing this. Next up, we've got update home point. Tapping on this will allow us to choose whether or not we want to set the home point to our remote controller or to where the aircraft is at the current time. Right now, it's not letting me do that because the drone is just sitting there. Moving on, we've got obstacle detection. So with this turned on, the obstacle avoidance sensors will be turned on and picking up obstacles around the drone. I keep this turned on, of course, when I'm in P mode or the normal mode, but whenever I'm in sport mode, they obviously will turn off on me. Underneath of that, we've got A-pass. I leave this turned off. A-pass is a great mode. It allows the drone to automatically dodge obstacles as you're flying around, kind of like the Skydio does. But here's the thing, the drone is severely limited in that mode. You're not going to get the full speed out of the drone. So I like to leave that feature turned off. Now, moving on, we've got um, the sensors. So the compass and the IMU from here, it shows us information about the status of them. So it says that the compass is normal and the IMU is normal, but we also have the ability to calibrate both the compass and the IMU from this location. Now the auxiliary LED, this gives us the option to have it turn on automatically. So when the light is low and when it gets closer down to the ground, or we can have it fully turned on at all times or fully turned off no matter what, no matter what the light is like outside and no matter how close it gets down to the ground. I usually keep this turned on auto just because of course it's very helpful in low light scenarios when landing and taking off. Next up, we've got Unlock GeoZone. Within here, it shows us all of our different licenses to unlock in certain areas. So as you guys unlock areas within the Fly application, it'll be shown right in here. Moving on back to find my drone. This is a great tool to use to find your drone if you crash it and you can't find it. Right now, of course, it's just sitting here inside of my room, so I don't need to use this, but you can have the drone start flashing, the LEDs flash, and you can have the drone beep so that if you lose it and if it's stuck up in a tree, you can easily find it. That is definitely a great feature to fall back on. Now, finally, uh, I'm gonna jump down to remote identification, go a little bit out of order here. If we tap on this, uh, 
You don't have to worry about this now, but with remote ID swirling around, you might have to soon. I've noticed that when I turn UUID off and identification and flight information off, um, when I turn the drone back on, they're automatically turned back on for me. So despite me having these turned off, when I go and shut down my Mavic Air 2 and I boot it back up, they will automatically just turn back on for me. So that's something to look out for. Uh, also find my, or we'll go into advanced safety settings now. Within here, we can choose what happens when the signal is lost. Do we want the drone to return to home? Do we want it to descend? Or do we want it to hover? Now, you might think to yourself, well, of course, I want that drone to return to home, but this is very subjective. So like some of the other settings we'll cover in this video, if you're flying, say, inside, you don't want the drone to fly up to 100 feet and return home. So you know, if you lose signal, you want the drone to just hover. So depending upon what your flight is, if you're inside or if you're outside, you're going to want to make sure you choose what happens when the signal's lost between your remote controller and the drone. Now, moving on, emergency propeller stop. Of course, if the drone is in the air and you encounter an emergency, and if you want those propellers to stop, what's it going to be? Is it going to be the emergency stop or is it going to be any time? Time, you can choose. I've never had to do that. Um, and then finally, we can choose whether or not AirSense is turned on or off. So I've covered AirSense in a uh, previous video. This is a really great system that DJI built using an ADS-B receiver into the Mavic Air 2 that picks up the signals emitted from other uh, manned aircraft and it gives us the ability to see where they are in real time. So because this is a brand new feature, you could turn this on and off for now within the fly application. I have a feeling that as we see brand new drones come out from DJI and as they build AirSense out, it's going to be a mandatory feature. So if you're somebody that just doesn't want to deal with it in its infant stages, you can go ahead and fully turn that off. Now I've got to say that out of the four different menu settings here, this is definitely the most involved. The safety section has the most amount of things we can change. As we move on here, the menus will get a little bit shorter. So moving on to control, the first thing we have at the top is how we want the units to display, whether it's in metric, in meters, metric, in kilometers, or imperial. Of course, this is personal preference. I live here in the United States, so I've got it set to imperial so I can see like feet and miles per hour. Next up, we've got the gimbal mode. I've got it set to follow mode so that as the drone flies around, the gimbal always stays level with the horizon, but if you want a different experience with the drone, you can flip over into FPV mode and that camera will actually bank with the drone as you fly around, which is a pretty cool experience. Uh, moving on, we've got enable upward gimbal rotation. I've got this turned on, so if we go back to the home screen, my gimbal can shoot upwards to positive 24 degrees. Now, if we went back to the settings, turned that off, the gimbal shoots back down and I now am locked at zero degrees. So I keep this turned on because sometimes I think it's cool to get some shots with the camera looking straight up, whether they're photos or videos, but do be wary if you've got that camera pointed up. Sometimes if you fly forwards, the camera will shoot back down because the camera or the drone is pitching forward. Um, but I like to have that turned on just because it's cool to get those upward shots when the drone allows. Moving on, we've got gimbal calibration. This is an auto process or you can do it manually, but the gimbal automatically calibrate. And if you have any sort of issues, it's a good idea to do a gimbal calibration. Moving on here, we have got some information about the remote controller and some different settings. So first up, we've got phone charging. Turning this on will, of course, now allow us to charge our phone through the um, Mavic Air 2 remote controller here. I've noticed that this setting will not stay on all of the time. So when I turn it on, it'll stay on for the whole time during this flight. But when I then go and put my Mavic Air 2 in my bag and I boot it up the next time, this will be turned off. I don't know if they're trying to save the battery in the remote controller or not, but just be wary that if you turn this on one time, it won't be turned on for the rest of the times that you fly. Now, moving on, we've got stick mode. Of course, it's a personal preference. I, and I think a lot of other people fly on mode two, but if you use mode one or mode three, I'd be interested to know. So let me know in the comment section below. Next, I've got button customization, and they don't give you a lot of different customization options. So I've got recenter gimbal. So if I tap the function button here on the remote controller, it will recenter the gimbal. It'll shoot it downwards or it'll shoot it upwards here. Or if I have it like tilted down a little bit, it'll shoot it either up or down, whatever it's closest to. This allows me to just quickly get my gimbal associated with the current way that I want it to be. And then also double tap, I've got it so that if I double tap the function button, it turns that LED on or it turns the LED off on the bottom. Now digging into the settings here, we've only got three options, recenter gimbal, auxiliary LED, and toggle map slash live view. That's weak. I really hope they add some more features in here for us. So right now I have it set to recenter gimbal and auxiliary LED. 
Now moving on, we can calibrate our RC if we have to, the remote controller, and we've got our flight tutorial there at the bottom if you need it, if you're brand new to flying your Mavic Air 2. Moving on here to the next menu setting, we have got the camera. First up, we can choose the photo format. So whether or not we want these photos to save in JPEG or JPEG and RAW, I don't understand why they don't let us only shoot in RAW. We have to save the JPEGs. Doesn't make sense to me, but of course I like shooting in RAW, so I've got this set to JPEG plus RAW so that I'm always saving those RAW photos and I can edit them as I please. Next up, we've got the size or the aspect ratio of said photos. So I always shoot in four by three just because it makes use of the whole sensor and we get the full resolution image. 16 by nine is just a cropped down version of that four by three image. So I would rather you guys shoot in four by three and crop down in 16 by nine afterwards if you want to. So again, just shoot in four by three, it's gonna give you all of the pixels and all of the resolution. We've also got histogram. That is that little uh, box here on the main screen that I'm dragging around. It shows you the exposure value of the shot that you're composing. So I've got this turned on to further allow me to make sure that everything is exposed properly. So histogram turned on. Overexposure warning. This allows you to see what in your image is overexposed. I'll turn this on and let's see. Not much is overexposed right now, but if we were to crank this exposure value up, you'll see that these zebra patterns come in and it shows you what is gonna be fully blown out in your image. And it's great to know what's gonna be overexposed, but I've kind of trained my eye to see what's pure white on here. And when I'm flying around, those zebra bars just get very, very distracting. So for me, I leave these turned off. We've also got auto sync HD photos. So I have this turned on and that means that all the photos you take automatically get downloaded directly to your mobile device. Now, if you don't have a lot of room on your mobile device, you might wanna turn it off because you could take up a whole lot of room storing all of those photos. But it's nice that after I'm done shooting, I can pack up my drone and I've got all those photos automatically downloaded on my phone. Now it doesn't save the raw photos, it only saves JPEGs, but it gives me a good way to preview the photos in their full resolution, even when I've got my drone turned off. Now the grid lines, this allows you to choose what type of lines are uh, gonna be on the live view. So right now I've got just a simple crosshair right there in the middle of the screen, but we can choose like the lines and the crosshair if we wanted to, or we can do all three and do like the diagonal lines. This is a mess to me. Of course, it can help you kind of line up your shot, but I like to turn all of these off except for the center point, And that allows me to line up all the shots as I need to. Next up, we've got white balance. Of course, this allows us to change the temperature of the image. So I've got it set to auto. I think that DJI's cameras do a really good job at choosing the white balance for me. And for aerial shots, I'm usually not all that picky. Of course, you can go into manual and choose your Kelvin from here. We can go cooler. We can go warmer. I would say if I was setting it to manual on like a nice sunny day, I'd go 5,600, maybe even up to 6,000. It is a little bit later in the day. But again, I think that DJI's drones do a really good job at setting the white balance for me. So I keep that on auto. Finally, at the bottom here, it shows us the information about the storage location, the SD card and the internal storage. It shows us the amount of capacity available, the amount total. Um, and finally, we can cache our video when recording. So. When we're recording video, it saves a lower resolution of that video to our mobile device. Now, I do auto sync the photos, but video I found just takes up way too much room. It's kind of annoying in my opinion and also can throttle the performance of your device. So if you're saving video to your mobile phone while shooting, of course, it's gonna use up a lot of resources. So I leave that turned off. Now, moving on to the final menu that we've got here, it is the transmission menu, which has a lot of really good information for us to see, but not a lot of changeable settings. So at the top here, we can choose the definition of the transmission feed coming back to us, that live view. So HD is 1080p and smooth is 720p. Now smooth, they say, is going to potentially give you further range and it's going to give you better latency. I've noticed no issues with HD and I'd rather have a higher resolution image coming back to me live as I'm flying my drone. So I'm pretty much always on HD. We can also choose our frequency. So 2.4 gigahertz gives us longer range. 5.8 gigahertz gives us a stronger connection at shorter ranges or dual band allows the drone to switch back and forth between the different frequencies as needed. This drone is very smart. I put it on dual band and let it do all the work for me. And the same is true with the channel mode here. You'll see that it's trying to find the best channel for me automatically dependent upon which one is the most stable. I mean, look guys, if you're going to be flying this drone and shooting photos and videos, the last thing you want to do is to make sure you're on the best channel. So for me, I let it automatically switch channels. I don't deal with 
going to manual and sliding this thing back and forth as I see it. So go on auto. It's going to save you a whole ton of time, a lot of headaches, and it's going to let you just uh, focus on shooting photos and videos. I mean, I think about it and there's absolutely no breakup when it chooses these channels for me and switches over. So don't worry about it. Set it to auto and you guys will be fine. Anyway, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. All Those are all the different settings and all the different icons built into the Fly application. Yes, I know this was long. Hopefully you guys stuck around to this full time. If you did, thank you. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.